On this episode, Christian opens up his secret book. I'm, I'm opening a book in the independent developer cookbook of secrets. But some secrets are not meant to be shared. Show me gentle, show me gentle. There are some things that not everybody wants to hear. <laughs> bye bye. Hmm. Hi everybody, I'm Christian. This is Lizzie's Academy. We are making the most awesome schmuck in the world. I am a bit biased. <laughs> Let's load this schmuck. If you remember correctly, on the last episode we had enemies spawning. But it doesn't look great. I want it to look a bit nicer. And we want to now the enemies to actually come at us, bro. We want to actually uh, the enemies to attack. Uh, but while we're here, let us just tr look at this. Uh, we still have the quest of doing nicer screens. Uh, the start screen doesn't look nice indeed. So maybe we, we have to tackle this at some point. We do have the flexible collision detection now, so that's good. Um, uh, where do enemies spawn? We actually figured this out. And we do have to do enemy behavior, even more enemies. Mm, uh, let's this is this. this is, it's, uh, nice screens, enemy behavior, bullets. Uh, let's put a nice screens on the back because I want to focus on uh, the enemy behavior. Previous episodes were running a little bit long, so I want to get straight to the, the problem. Right. <clears throat> so we had enemies flying in, but um, the problem is that they all move in together. And so that was one of the doggy zones and hopefully you guys came up with some kind of like cool solution on because I mean this is not really that important to be honest like it's not really they don't have to look amazing flying in but it kind of like you know they, they always say like you only have one you can only get one opportunity for like a first impression right and this is the first impression we want you know the wave to come in and it's it should look cool um, one easy thing to do is just make it just faster. This looks a lot more like, okay, this is actually, yeah, this is fine. This looks action-wise, they just flew in and like, whoa, you know, it's just making things faster usually makes things more interesting. But, you know, what if we want to do things a bit different? Well, let's just tackle the fact that we're all moving together. So it looks like they're all like in one block. Um, we can kind of like, I think the, the, the word for that is stagger, right? Like we can just make first row fly in first and the second row, uh, column. First column, first, second, second. So, so like, just like fly them in column wise. Um, and I think a good way of doing this is here. Mm, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? If they're flying in column by column, right? If you think about this, they're just not flying in together. But first, the first column fly in. It means that all the other guys are waiting, right? There's, there, we want to, them to be already created, all waiting off screen and waiting for the first column to fly in. And when the first column fly in, the second column flies in. So there's going to be a waiting aspect to it. And so that's my plan here. We're just going to introduce a new property to the enemies where we spawn enemies, right? Uh, we're going to go call this my n uh, dot wait. And we're gonna call. Uh, we're gonna set the weight to zero. And then here, when we spawning the enemies, right? How are we going to do this? Well, there's two ways. Either we can create another property, and we might just do that. Let's just do another property. Just let's call this n weight, right? That's kind of like basically the amount of frames we want to wait until the enemy does something and we're gonna uh, say like my n dot weight equals whoops nicer screens <laughs> and wait uh, so the third parameter of the spawn and function uh, the fourth parameter of the spawn and function is gonna be n weight and we're gonna take that parameter dump it in, into the property my, uh, that we just invented my n dot weight and so here when we're actually spawning the enemies well what are we gonna put in there well, it's going to be the column, um, so it's just going to be x. We're just going to dump x into the weight. 
because then the first column will wait one frame, the second column will wait two frames, because you know the second it's a column number two, so it will wait two frames. And the third column will wait three frames like, <laughs> and so forth. <laughs> and the final column will be column number ten, it will wait ten frames. Now we're gonna tweak this a little bit, but I just wanted to just have something in the fourth argument. Right, and now in the behavior, we are going to do if my, before we check for any missions, before we check even for missions, we're going to go if my n dot wait is greater than zero, then my n dot wait minus um, minus equal one. We're going to redu reduce if wait the wait timer is set to some number. We're going to reduce it by one. And we're going to return. Again, a return statement abandons the function immediately, just completely cancels the function and doesn't do anything else in the function. Uh, and so, yeah, if there's waiting happening, we're going to wait and do nothing else. Better, better, better. I like it. So now they're not moving in this, this kind of like uniform pattern. We can multiply the x by 2 to kind of get more spacing in. Okay, okay, okay. This looks a little bit more interesting now. What if we get a lot of spacing in here? Just, I want to see, like always when you design, you kind of want to see too much. I kind of like like too much though. I like kind of like the six a lot. That's actually really cool. Can we can we make it like really like just twelve? Just double the number. It's just like I want to see something ridiculous. See now it takes too long. Now I feel like okay, get over with it. I just want to start shooting. I'm just going to start blasting. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Six was maybe. Maybe a bit slow still, maybe five. Just tweaking the, the numbers, but maybe I shouldn't tweak. Yeah, that's good. Oh, by the way, um, I also want to do something here. We kind of like the level that we spawn is kind of like unique because we have those empty rows on the on the sides. I wanted to fill them with enemies too for now, even though I like the look, um, because I want to see what happens if we have a, like a full screen. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. But now still, um, the way they are flying in is something I don't like. It looks mechanic. And this is generally something that you um, that we have to uh, learn as designers, as game designers. Um, our job as game designers is to move things on the screen. Uh, that's very close to the job of animation. And thus, as game designers or game programmers, game developers, we have to also um, um, learn about animation. I think this is very good. This is very, these are two areas are very closely related, even though it seems so distant, right? It seems like an animator draws something and a programmer, developer, game maker programs, right? But um, we're actually doing the same thing, just using slightly different methods. And even, you know, game developers sometimes also draw things, right? So, um, and as on the other hand, animators are sometimes actually doing a lot of math when planning their animations. Mm, so what I want to say is we are, uh, we have to understand animation. And the, um, the problem that we're having here is that we have to, like, if we want to describe the movement that we have is, as I said, it, is, it looks a bit robotic. That's because it's linear motion. It's linear motion. Let me uh, show you what I mean. All right, I'm in paint again, and you know what it means. You know what it means. Oh, yeah, beautiful illustrations. Oh, oh, oh I didn't want to do this. I want to have a black. So I'm going to draw a diagram, a graph. Look at this graph. Look at this graph. So on the x-axis, we have time. Can we have a thicker? I always, always want thicker. It never goes thick enough. Time and then, oops, oh, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to go there. Okay. And then position Y. If we want to draw on the screen, 
what our enemies are looking when they're flying in, it would so do, look something like this. We have like this, bam, and then like this, bam. It would be something like this. It starts off screen somewhere high up and it goes down at a steady speed until it reaches a certain point and then it start, stays there, right? That's the, the movement that we have on our enemy. Um, this is what we call an animation, a linear motion. This is basically where something is moving straight. And this is a highly unnatural motion, something that you rarely have in real animation. Usually when you have something that's moving linear, it's because, I know, it's a robot or some kind of machine. Machines are moving quite often in linear fashion. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know, a, like a spaceship or a car. Very few things are moving in a linear fashion. Maybe like a box on a conveyor belt or something, you know, something like this. Um, in the real world, uh, especially when it's something that is living, but also, you know, just like, just also like, you know, like a car as well, you have some something like this, you would have a curve, things would, you know, accelerate and slow down, there would be weight involved, you know, there's usually things in real world have mass, and there's, there's a limited force working on this, so things are slowing down and moving in other directions, swaying, you know, there's some arcs involved and so forth. This is like a whole subject. I'm gonna, so what we call this, this kind of like when we draw here is an animation curve. And as an animator, you manipulate the animation curve. We are about to manipulate the animation curve of our little spaceships, of our little enemies. Now, right now, we already had an animation curve, it's just linear, and I want us to change this a little bit. What we're going to do is uh, so what's something that we call an easing function. Easing. Um, basically, we're going to have like a target, that's the blue line here. We're going to have a target. We're going to have, this is where our enemy starts. And what the enemies will do is it's going to try to ease into this blue curve. It will go fast at the beginning. But then as it gets closer with over time, as it gets closer to the blue line, it slows down until it just barely moves at all, until it like gracefully touches this um, this blue line. And this general feels like, I don't know, um, like how a plane lands, right? Like a plane goes fast at the beginning when it's diving and then it slows down and just gracefully touches, you know? That's kind of like, for example, how things will look, or I know, in, if you look at how SpaceX lands the rockets, the rockets go very fast and then they start the engines and they slow down and just gently touch down, right? Like that's the idea. Uh, multiple, there's many, many examples of, of, of um, things in real life that move this way. And I want to use this for, uh, for our little enemies. So let's try that. Right, uh, so what I will show you today now is a magical function. It's, it's, um, it's like, it's like, the, it's like the, I'm, I'm opening a book in the independent developer cookbook of secrets. You know, I'm going to give you like a really nice juicy function. It's really, really nice and easy, but it looks really, really cool. So. Right now we're moving things at a steady speed. Get away from here. We don't need you anymore. Bam. So the function that I'm going to show you, and it's good to remember because it's really nice and easy and it, it really helps in a lot of cases. It's like a basic easing function, basic easing function. Okay. And that function is going to call, like this is, this is the, the formula that we're looking for. If we want to animate X, uh, the function goes like this, X plus equals target x minus x, open parentheses, target x minus x, close parentheses, divided by n. And for n you can put any number. 2 is very fast and the higher the number gets, the slower the easing will happen, the gentler the easing will happen. That's it. And you just have to do this every frame and that's it. That's all there is to it. This little tiny function will do all of the easing. There's no additional variables required. N is not variable. You can just put it, set it to a fixed value. You don't have to have an extra variable. We just need a target and the current position. We already have the current, I mean, you have the current position, right? But you also already have the target. So we can do this right now. 
my n dot y plus equals uh, my n dot pos y minus my n dot y we are here minus my n dot y we are here in this this equation we close the parentheses and we divide it by some number i said two was very fast let's see what two looks like you're done <laughs> easing function is done let's look at this it was fast Again, two is very, very fast. Let's make it 10. Let's just, let, let's show me gentle. Show me gentle. I didn't know. Yes. Yes. That looks nice. See how they're all like settling in? Like a swooping wave. Oh yeah, that's a wave right there, baby. Oh, can, what does too, too gentle look like? Yeah, see now we're kind of like not, not really getting going. It's really slow. Uh, okay, 10 was okay. What about something between two and 10? That's something that we tried. What, what does five look like? Mm, see, see, I, I, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Eight. Oh yeah, eight is good. Eight is good. Eight is good. I don't like the spacing between the individual fly-ins now. Uh, I want to tighten up the spacing. Uh, so we have to tighten up this x multiplied by five. That's the weight. How much we're waiting between the individual columns. Uh, let's bring it down to three. All right, all right, all right, let's see what it looks like when we have um, different enemies. Mmm, mm -mm. smooth like butter. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, I want to maybe, I want to, I'm going, so I divide by eight. I want to see seven. I want to see, because it feels like it's a bit too slow. Yeah, I kind of like this maybe. Because if, if, I like this, the smoothness of it, but it feels like it takes a bit too long. So I think seven, seven worked well for me. I don't know about you. You maybe have to have your own tastes. I'm, I'm not judging. It's you, you want to do it yourself. But remember this function. Remember this function. This is so good and it's so easy. The, this, the, way what, the reason why this function is good is because it gets you those nice animation curves with minimum effort. There's no additional funky variables required or any kind of like, you know, special function that waits for something or if statements or anything. It's all just one line of code. And if you can remember this, you can always have nice, smooth animation everywhere. And it's one of those things where people will see this and be like, Ooh, yeah, that looks, that looks nice. That's, that's, somebody put some, a lot of effort into this. And it's like, it's just one line. <laughs> that's the secret sauce right there. That's the secret sauce. Remember this. This is very good. All right. So we're flying in. There's. Uh, the secret sauce has has a dark side. And the problem is that switching to the Protec mission, like um, because it gets slower, the um, the enemies will get slower as they approach the target, and as they're very very close to the target, they're moving very very slowly, and they can never quite reach the target. I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, so when they reach a the target, they switch to Protec mission, right? I'm going to show you what I mean by just switching. The, I'm going to define the, what the product mission is. Product mission is going to be um, plus 10. We're going to just zoom in downwards once we switch to the product mission. So you're going to see, I, I, I want to see as the enemies, how long it takes enemies to switch to Protec. None of them switch to Protec. None of them. 
they're all still flying in because they're just you know like hundreds of a millimeter away uh, from their target position and never quite reach it. That's what easing is. It's kind of like this you know, gentle slowing in. So we, what we have to do is we kind of have to make them snap in to the position, right? Um, like once they reach a certain minimum distance, we just snap them in. Um, so the way we do this is, uh, and it's difficult because we don't know from which side they're coming. I mean, we know that they're coming from the top, but maybe, you know, we're going to mess around with this a little bit. So um, the way we do this, we're going to calculate the difference between where we are and where we're supposed to be. And if that difference gets close enough, then we ca call it quits, right? We're going to call it like, okay, this is this is close enough. So let's do something like if this is smaller than one, one pixel, right? Let's just see how that looks. Uh, if that happens, then we're going to go my n dot y equals, um, we're going to set it to the position that we're supposed to be at, and we're going to switch to protec. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> hmm. There's a problem here. So I I got things backwards. See, that's that's good. So we take our current position, which is a very very low value, maybe zero, something below zero actually, and we subtract from that where we're supposed to be. That is a high value, right? So we, from a low value, we subtract a high value. We get a very, very negative number at the beginning of our animation. That's definitely a smaller than one, and thus, and thus, we immediately switch from fly in to protect before we reach our our target position. Before we reach our target position, so because. Negative is is kind of smaller than a small number, right? Like, <laughs> what we're interested in is the magnitude of the number, not where it is. Kind of like uh, there's a difference between neg magnitude and value, the actual value, right? The magnitude, kind of like if it's a tiny number, like zero point zero zero one, and not like minus ten thousand, right? That's a smaller number technically, but that's also a big mag number in magnitude, right? Uh, and the way we get this, we can strip off the minus, um, basically turn all numbers positive, um, and that is called, called ABS, absolute. We're going to take the absolute value of that number. So if it's minus uh, 1000, it will get turned into plus 1000. If it's plus 1000, it will stay plus 1000. Uh, this takes care of that problem. So now we're really just looking at numbers that are close to zero. And now you see uh, enemies were arriving and settling in the position and then switching to, to the Protec mesh. That's what we want. Okay. There is a bit of a snapping happening that I, I don't like, but that's kind of like a, uh, kind of like a side effect of this. Maybe we can make it 0 0.5. Does that look a little better? Uh, a little bit better. But it's still a bit snappy. But it's okay. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, let's go 0 0.7. I just like tweaking things a little bit. Okay. Good. So now um, there's one more thing I want to do. I, I kind of like the, like, they fly in, but you don't like, you don't hear anything. So let's make a let's make a sound effect for for, for flying in. Uh, let's look for a because of those all those music, we have not too many slots left, but it's fine. It's fine. We're gonna figure this out. Uh, let's make it just like. Ooh. Okay, maybe a bit faster. Uh, I'm gonna tweak the 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 loudness of this. Okay, that's good. Um, I don't know. Uh, we're gonna uh, first of first we really just like interested in the timing of it. So that's sound effect twenty eight. Um, so let's do it like. Uh, 
when we spawning things, let's just do it like here, spawn effect 28. I'm gonna maybe put it somewhere else in a second. That's okay, that's okay. Um, I think a bit faster is okay. And now I am I want it to feel a bit a bit crazy. Mm, that's okay. That's a bit me. I just want. I, I, I like this. This 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 sounds this sounds more, more melodic. It's kind of more pleasant. Maybe this. Mm, this look, sounds a bit more overworldly. Uh, in order to get m more more out of your sound effects, it's really cool to use those effects um, here. So for example, vibrato. That's now in the sound effect number two. We put this into this the last column. Just put, just press, keep pressing two. Add the sound effect two to each note. I switched from this version of the editor to this version of the editor when the last column just matched two. Let's try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, let's try arpe arpeggio fast. That's six. Okay, that's a little bit too much, but it's cool. Like we're gonna remember that for this, for if we have pickups or anything, uh, we're gonna remember that. I think the vibrato sounded fine. Let's let's keep the vibrato for now. Yeah, that's, that's a bit more a more structure. We can play with those uh, settings in here. This sounds more like room reverb, right? Yeah, this sounds a bit nasty, like nasty guys being like, Ew, you know, <laughs> like catty a little bit. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Let's try that. This sounds... Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. That feels like... Yeah, that's good. I, I like this. This is, this is, this is already... Mwah. Good. Okay. Okay, so we solved that problem. Now, something we can also do, I mean, this is really just like um, tweaking things, but if we do this with the x val uh, y value here, we can do it with the x value as well, and we, maybe we should. So we're gonna um, just copy this thing and we're just gonna replace y with x. Just tweening the um, x position as well. Now, we're not actually changing the x position, but maybe we should, right? So let's try to maybe, I don't know, I don't know how that, that works, um, how that will look like, but let's may, maybe make them uh, come at an angle. I just want to see how that looks like. I had like this idea. So let us just here. So they spawn off screen 66 um, pixels above where they're supposed to be. That's okay. But also let's them spawn Minus 32 times 2. Oh, let's only minus 128, but we're going to multiply by 2 as well. Wow! That's not what I expected. What? <laughs> let's go with 64. I think 64 was the correct. Yeah, so see now it has more of a more of a 3D look. The only problem is I have is the sound effect comes now a little bit too late because it takes a while for them to appear on the screen. So maybe maybe we're not gonna do that. I don't know. Let's go, let's just tweak the numbers. I, I'm just putting some numbers in. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't figured out exactly what I'm doing. I was like just, oh yeah. See if if we get those numbers a bit lower then it doesn't look as um a bit closer to where because if they're very far away from where it's supposed to be it takes for them to appear on the screen and ah, this means good it has more like a 3d effect you know 
you know, you can experiment with this more, right? Because right now uh, we are um, going from left to right with the weighting, but you can also go from outside into the, into the center. There is more you can experiment with this, and it's going to be probably one of the things for the doggy zone. Um, you can experiment with this value here, maybe first the lower column uh, rows and then second. It, there's, there's more you can do here. Let's stop it here because we can experiment with those things for ages as we did in the past. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get more into the protect mission, right? So if we are, or, or actually protect mission is not something that I want to do because protect mission is actually not doing anything, just staying where they are. Uh, what I want to do is doing the attack mission. Um, so if, let's just for now, let's just go the attack mission. Let's do it like a simple at attack mission possible. Let's just make it so that it's going to linearly move downward. Uh, minus equals one. So just going to move downwards. That's that's the attack mission. Now, we're going to have to somehow find a way for those, because, you know, they land here. They fly in. They're at the position where they're supposed to be. Now, sometimes, and that's the idea of space invaders, sometimes space invaders from this formation break out and, and fly down, right? And this happens regularly. Uh, every couple of seconds, we have uh, Space Invader popping out and attacking, right? So we have to have something that periodically picks a random Space Invader and says like, you guy, you attack now, right? And we have, have to do some, some kind of like, a, some, something like this. So this is gonna be an update function of the update game function. And I'm just gonna scroll all the way down at the bottom. I think all the way out the bottom is, I think it's a good idea. Um, maybe here, before we do the animation, because animation is not quite as important as what we're doing here. So let's call this, this is the, you know what, let's do, let's put, let's put it in a new function because this update function is getting so big and I'm, I'm just like, uh, let's call this um, picking. I'm gonna call this picking this function. I don't know, it's it's a bit a bit vague, but let's just call it picking. And we're gonna add this in this behavior tab. I'm gonna call this function picking. Let us just now uh, pick a random enemy from our enemy list. Right? So let's just go local. We're gonna create a local variable, my n. Now there's a cool use of the random function was added recently to pico 8, not that far away. Uh, you can supply an array to the random function as an argument and it will just pick a random element from that array. Isn't that neat? Isn't that cool? Right? So you can just like, okay, technically if you had an array, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? The numbers from one to six in an array, that would be a dice. I mean, yeah. <laughs> You can do it differently as well, but hey, that would be technically a dice. And you could tweak the dice now, right? You can have like, oh, there's no ones, but two twos on our dice. That's cool. That's really useful. That's that's really useful for gameplay kind of stuff. Uh, it's really nice. But in this case, we're not picking stuff from a list of numbers. We're picking stuff from um, from my enemy's mission, uh, from, from my enemies, from my enemy's array. Enemies, right? We're picking a random enemy from our enemies. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say if my end dot mission, if that's protect, because remember, we have to, we want to wait for them to actually fly in before they start attacking. So we want to make sure that they're in the mission protect before they attack. <laughs> then so if their mission is currently protect, uh, if they're waiting for uh, for attack order, then we're gonna go my end dot mission equals attack. Right? We're gonna set the mission to attack. Let's run this and see what happens. There is no my end, 
Right. If there are no enemies, because we are in the, the game mode where it just shows us the wave number, the wave text mode, then there are no enemies on the screen. And then uh, picking a random number from that array will result in a nil. And that just goes sideways horribly. So we're going to go if mode is not equals uh, game, then uh, return. I'm just gonna cancel the picking if the game mode was set to uh, is not set to game. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> They're all deserting. My, I am too powerful. <laughs> I am too powerful. <laughs> uh, we have to add one. Not so now you can see they're coming and it, it's okay. The problem is that obviously here, that's not something that we want to do every frame that we want to do periodically. How often? Not quite sure, to be honest. Um, but yeah, if we want to do something periodically, again, we had, in the past we did countdown timers and so forth. Uh, this time I wanted to introduce you to a new concept and that is the concept of modulo. Modulo. That sounds awesome. That sounds like Daft Punk. So modulo is dividing something, but getting the reminder. We're not interested in the result of the division. We're only interested in the reminder of the division. And this is a very, very useful thing. Let me show you what I mean. I want to go to draw start. Um, that's the start screen. I just want to just print some stuff stuff on the screen. Uh, let's just print stuff 64, 64, just because people were so confused about this. Okay, just printing some stuff on the screen. That's just, I just want to print something. Um, and the stuff I want to print is I'm going to create a local variable called stuff. And I'm going to print this stuff on the screen. And the stuff I want to print is Two modulo two. The percentage sign that's modular, that's the modulo operator. It returns zero. Three modulo two returns one. Five modulo two returns one as well. Uh, 5 modulo 3 returns 2. These are just random numbers right now, but what is happening underneath? I don't know if you were like this. I know when I was in elementary school, we were learning, we were in math class, right? We didn't know about, they didn't teach us uh, uh, fractions right away. We didn't know about, you know, one third. That's a complicated number, one third. We also didn't know about 0 0.3, that again, complicated stuff, right? We just in elementary school, we have apples and, and pies that need to be divided among, among children, you know? There's no comma values. We only had integers and that's good. So we were then, when we were dividing things, when we said like, hey, you know, um, this, there are five apples here and they have to be divided among three children. Uh, what are we going to do? Well, if we have five apples and they have to be divided among three children, then every child gets one apple. And then there's going to be two apples left. That's going to be the reminder, right? Uh, we divide equally among the available children. The, we divide it equally. We have divided so that, uh, that everybody is at the same level. And then there's going to be some part that's no longer div divisible and that's is the reminder, right? So again, so something like, sometimes it divides equally, right? If, if it's five, there's five apples and there's five children, every, every child gets an apple. If there's 10 apples and there's five children, every child gets two apples. No reminders. Everybody gets some number of apples and there's no apples left. But if there are 11 apples and there's five children, then everybody gets two apples and at the end there's one apple left for the teacher. Obviously. 
that's the module. I don't know if, because not everybody's background is the same. Um, I didn't know because that back in the then we didn't call it module or we didn't use the word module. We just we called it the reminder or the rest. Uh, and then quickly that was forgotten because we moved on to the fractions and then nobody was interested in the rest anymore. And we never did reminders, <laughs> never did rest in all of our my, my school history, right? But in game programming, this is hot. This is the hottest stuff. This is super interesting. I'm, I'm into it right now. I'm always into it because the reminders are really cool. What the reminders are allow us to do is to repeat in a, a sequence of numbers, which is quite often what we want to do. So often we want to animate things, right? We want to animate, we want, we want to, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? We want to have like a sequence of numbers that always repeat. And that's something that reminders are very, very good at. We're gonna take T, this little variable that we have, right? And we're gonna do a modular five. This is a bit fast, this is a bit fast, I have to say. Let us use time. Um, so this is getting a bit complicated. So let's just draw two things. Uh, time, there's a function called time. We can use the time. It's kind of like, a, like the T that we're using here, but time counts in seconds. Uh, so we're gonna call local seconds equals, and we're gonna floor it because we're just interested in integer stuff. We don't, no, no, no funky, no comma values, just integer, we're integer length. So we're gonna go floor the time. And I'm just, I'm just gonna write this, uh, I'm just gonna write the seconds to the screen for now. I just wanna see the seconds, oops. What is, what is happening? Go, go away, I don't want you. Okay, you see the seconds. I'm printing the seconds. Now I'm gonna modulo the seconds. So I'm gonna print it a little bit further down, uh, 70. Uh, we're gonna change the color to 14. Right now it's still seconds, don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Okay, so now local stuff, we're gonna call this seconds and we're gonna do modulo five. So we're gonna use the seconds number, the amount of seconds that have elapsed. And we are going to do a modulo five, we're going to divide it by five, but only return the reminder. And we're going to print that as a pink number underneath. So right now they're in sync. They're both the same. Very nice. Five. <gasps> pink number goes down to zero and then counts up again. Zero. One, two, three, four. Zero. One, two, three, four. Zero. Like, see? See what it does? What we can do with the modulo is we can take a number that constantly takes up into thousands, hundreds of thousands, right? We can take that number and we can say like, take this number that always goes up and turn it into a number that always goes up to a certain value and it resets down to zero, goes up to a certain value, returns down to zero. The value that it goes up to is um, the value that you modulo against minus one. So here in this case, we do a modulo five which means the pink number will go all the way up to four and then reset it down to zero. Four, zero, see? One, two, three, four, zero. Nice, nice, nice. So you can tell, already tell, that this is actually a very, very cool trick that we can use, for example, Hey, let's say that every five seconds we want something to happen. So we can say like, oh, that's right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do something like, uh, oops. if stuff equals zero, then CLS seven. Flash the screen white uh, every five seconds. Right? Every five seconds we can flash the screen white using the modular and you can change the, 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 the spacing of the event 
by changing the number here. So every 10 seconds, every 30 seconds, every minute, you know, you can change the spacing here. Now we're using the time function here. Again, the time function that works in seconds. We are going to be working in frames. That's why we have the T variable. That's what the T variable is for. Again, the T variable is counted up every frame in update function. So that's how I want to be spacing things in time. That's the thing I'm going to be using. And this is something generally that I'm not going to focus on. Actually, when we did the blinking, you remember when we did the blinking, when we did the blinking uh, uh, function? That should have been done with a modulo, to be honest. Same thing when we did the draw function, when we did the invisibility blinking. We used the sign and everything. That's that's fine. You can use the sign as well. I wanted to show the sign function because we're going to use the sign function as well a lot. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, but the modulo is probably the, the way to go, usually in the most cases. I usually, I picked these kind of like weird choices here as part of the tutorial series, but actually the modulo, the modulo is just like very unusual, just not something that you see every time, every day in math, I feel. Um, so I felt it was the most alien thing, the kind of like the weirdest thing, but uh, also like once you wrap your head around, it's, it's kind of like, okay. And then, and then it's very useful. It's just like it becomes same second nature. Where is the update function? Oh, it was a draw function. It was an update function. <sighs> uh, draw start. There we go. Uh, deleting all this stuff now. Right. So we were about to trigger the, the attack mission every couple of frames, right? So here in the picking function, we're just going to do something if t modulo, let's say we don't want to attack every second, uh, 30, if t modulo 30 equals zero, then, then we're going to do this the attack. Thing. There they are, they're attacking. Good, good, good. I don't know if 30 is the right frequency. Maybe 60 is a better frequency. Every two seconds. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I, I think I think that feels okay. It feels like every now and then there's a, there's a guy coming up. We're gonna tweak this a little bit for um, uh, further down the line. But for now, we learned enough for today. Our enemies are flying in a smooth fashion. And they're attacking in a simple fashion. They're attacking... I mean, they're, it's a bit slow. We can speed them up, right? It's, it's not, no problem. We can just like here in the attack function, we can... Um, do 1.7 maybe something like this. I figured a 1.7 like in my experiments was was a good good attack speed. Like yeah, okay, he's coming out. Like this this seems dangerous. Oh, I even died. Okay, so this is it for today. Let's move on to the doggy zone. All right, so this doggy zone is going to be a bit meaty. So get ready for that. I have three tasks that you, three tasks that you can try, and um. Yeah, you're gonna f pick one that that f that fits something that 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 you want to be dealing with. First of all, we said that you can experiment with the fly-in animation, right? You can experiment with this more, and yeah, so that's that's the first challenge. Experiment more with this. I think again, uh, changing the timing a little bit, um, the waiting, not just f uh, make it go from left to right, but maybe you know just like th th from the sides or. Um, going uh, line by line instead of column by column, like or maybe diagonally, something like this. There's there's a long there's a lot of things you can do just by tweaking this parameter here. Um, you know how much the individual uh, enemies are supposed to wait until they start flying in, and then you can uh, tweak in the easing values here, um, and then of course here where we are deciding where they're spawning. Uh, that's also something you can tweak maybe the left side is starting uh, on the left side of the screen, the right side is landing on the right side of the screen, and flying in, meeting in the middle. Like, I think there's things you can experiment with here, and I think there's a lot of potential here to have fun and make beautiful GIFs. 
Now, another thing I want um, I want you to focus on. There is a problem, if you haven't noticed. When our enemies are starting their attack runs, they are just picked randomly now. Randomly from the entire array, from all of the entire... All of the enemies. And they're just leaving those weird gaps. It would make more sense if, if the enemies that are closer to the bottom edge of the screen, if they were atta attacking first. That's a challenge. How do we do this? How can you rewrite this part here? This one line where you just randomly pick an enemy from the entire array. Can you rewrite this in a way that only the enemies that are on the on the bottom row that they're, they're attacking first and only when once they're gone, you know, we got next row and so forth. There is different ways of doing this. This can be quite a rabbit hole or there is some ways of doing this kind of like a bit haphazardly, but it kind of like works most of the time. Uh, we're not looking for something that's like perfect, you know, necessarily, although if you can pull it off, that's good. Uh, but yeah, this is actually a quite meaty challenge. So this is for people who are like really into figuring things out um, themselves. If uh, you get stuck on this, don't, don't worry. I'm going to deliver my solution for this, which is going to be very, very <laughs> not perfect, but it will get the job done. And then finally, the third challenge is again, meaty challenge. Uh, it's going to be about the attack patterns. Currently, the uh, green enemies are just going down. Can you make it more interesting? Can you come up with maybe some kind of like back and forth motion or something? Or maybe it's doing something completely different, maybe diagonally or something. I don't know. Come up with some co cool solutions. Additionally, can you make it so that different enemies do different attack patterns? Uh, we're going to tackle this certainly in the next episode. But for now, it's time to say thank you to all the beautiful people who made this show possible. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs. Mm, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, I'm loving what we're doing this with this year. I'm loving that this starts to look more and more like a game. Now there's enemies that are attacking us. On the next episode, we are going to make those attacks more interesting. And we're gonna add some spicy, spicy juice that will add more gameplay, more strategic depth to this very, very simple old school game. More about that on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.